Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted. This is the Wednesday edition, episode 116. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm George Conger. Today is August 20th, 2014. Now, let's move on and talk about your vision for the ACNA. Um, you've stepped into the ACNA. It's almost uh, larger now than the, uh, the church in Canada, and it, it's healthy, it's strong, but it has places to go. Um, where do you see it going in 5, 10, or 15 years? I, as I look down the road, I, I see that we have just incredible potential. Mm -hmm. and, and my heart is to reach North America with the transforming love of Jesus. And so what I have tried to do as I look forward, I see a vision of two, basically two main pieces. One is reaching North America with the transforming love of Jesus Christ, basically taking back the West mm -hmm. for Jesus. Um, that's one component. The second component is building up the province. And so under that, I see, and, and this is from listening to folks as well as just looking at the landscape of where we are in culture, where we are in our time, and what God's doing in our midst. Um, so under reaching North America with the transforming love of Jesus, um, I think there's several initiatives or things that we need to continue to do or, or, or begin to do in order to do that. The first is church planting. And I, I think um, as much as we want that to be in our DNA, I don't think it's completely in our DNA at this point, and we've got a lot of work to do there. So I, I hope we'll continue, first of all, the emphasis we've had in, in planning churches the way we have. Um, but that's uh, just the beginning. I wanna see us call together uh, what I'm gonna call an Anglican 1000 round table and bring together all the different folks that are doing church planting in our province. It is amazing when you think about churches for the sake of others and Pair USA and the, the Greenhouse Movement and all the events that are, uh, the uh, Diocese of Virginia has. They have several initiatives going on through in their diocese. Diocese of the Carolinas has theirs. Diocese of the South has theirs. So how can we bring everybody to the table, even though folks have different approaches, uh, different ways of doing it, and get us talking to each other, comparing notes, sharing strategies, sharing resources, and, and strategizing to reach North America by planting churches. Um, another thing that I would like to see us do is with college ministry. Um, I would like to see us target 50 to 100 college campuses around the country and plant good Anglican churches in these places uh, and have uh, rectors who are intellectually vibrant, uh, that have been trained well, um, and that know how to relate to college kids and, and reach uh, the college campuses of this country. Um, Another area that I, that I think the Lord has set us up for, and I don't know what else to call this, Kevin, maybe you can help me with a name, but um, it's called, um, what I'm calling it right now, is reaching the nations among us. Mm -hmm. As much as I'm for world missions and, and have been a part of that all my life, the Lord has brought the world to us. And in all of our neighborhoods, we have people that have moved here from all over the world, and, and some of these congregating, in, 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 especially in the urban areas, together. Well, who's reaching those folks? And I believe we as Anglicans are in a unique position because of our Anglican relationships all over the world to be able to speak into those communities and plant churches in those communities. And so what I hope to do is, is working with our uh, primates from around, Anglican primates from around the world, ask their wisdom on how they would recommend us reaching those cultures and, and those, those people that have come to us from, from their part of the world. Another thing that, that I'd like to see us do, and um, uh, I don't know what you would call this um, other than I'm calling it the Archbishop's City Tour. Okay. And um, I would like to uh, target 10 cities over the next two years and have the Archbishop go for, for a three-day event, uh, possibly uh, modeled after what New England, the Diocese of New England did last year, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe it was called Celebrate New England. And uh, there would be a three-day event where uh, part of it's geared toward uh, the, the bishops and the laity in that area, I'm um, sorry, the clergy in that area, and another's uh, geared toward uh, having an event where we all come together, uh, worship together. And, and then the last piece of that is, is being exposed to and learning about the ministries 
that are going on in those areas. Uh, there's so many good things happening around the country, but people don't know about it. Right. Uh, another piece on uh, reaching uh, North America is what I'm calling Anglican MT25 or Matthew 25. Okay. Um, highlighting all of the incredible ministries that congregations are doing to reach the poor, the needy, the elderly, those in prison, um, those people that are neglected by the rest of society. We have some incredible things happening there, but we could be doing more. And so not only highlighting that, but but helping folks uh, network together and then give us wisdom to help us know how to help congregations and dioceses reach the poor and, and reach the needy among us. So that's all under the umbrella of reaching North America. And uh, I just think it's vital. And, and that's up front and it's first because if, if, if we focus too much on ourselves, what ends up happening is it, it becomes about us. And we've got to keep the mission out in front of us of reaching people with the love of Jesus Christ. I mean, he has changed our lives. We want him to be able to change other people's lives as well. What do you think right now are the best parts of the ACNA? The best parts of the ACNA? Mm -hmm. um, well, I think the laity, first of all, are some of the best parts, and that's an area that we haven't highlighted enough uh, or given folks an opportunity to shine. Um, I, think our, uh, I think what we are doing with church planting is going is some good stuff, but we can do better. Um, as I said earlier, helping the needy and the poor um, is something that I think we're doing well, but people don't know about. Um, I think uh, our discipleship efforts uh, need some work. Um, I think we now have a good uh, curriculum for, for that to happen, but we've got some work on how to implement that in a way that people can use it. Mm -hmm. As I said, the first part, was, is focusing on reaching North America. The second part is on building up the province. Mm -hmm. What can we do to build up the Anglican Church in North America? And I think we've got to do several things that, that, that are important to me. First is we need to relook at our seminary training. Our seminaries are doing some great job. Uh, I, I'm very pleased with so much of what they're doing, but there's one piece I want us to evaluate, and that is how are we training our clergy to engage the culture? Mm. It's, it's one thing to have folks who are intellectually rigorous and, and understand um, how we do things as Anglicans, but then how do you take that into the culture in which we live? And the culture's changed so much in the last five to 10 years um, by itself. We need to make sure our training is, is, is geared toward that. Uh, another thing that I'd like to see us do is, uh, and I don't know how else to call this, uh, to say this, except we need some training in liturgy and preaching among our clergy. Uh, frankly, I'm tired of sloppy liturgy. Um, I, whether it's ho low church, high church, Anglo-Catholic, contemporary, charismatic, let's have good liturgy. I'm trying not to cheer from here, but yes, agreed. <laughs> um, secondly, I, I think we need to offer some, some preaching workshops mm -hmm. to uh, help our clergy renew and deepen and sharpen their skills. Um, uh, especially the emphasis on teaching the scripture to people, not teaching uh, theological courses to teach. That's great in, in Sunday school classes, but how do you preach? How do you preach the Word of God? And so I'd like to see us uh, create and do some things to help clergy become sharper. Uh, we have some fine preachers in our church. We really do. But a lot of folks aren't getting mentored and trained in how to do that. And uh, so I'd like to see us do that. In the area, of, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that might be something you want to encourage the seminaries to offer a project where uh, for a couple weekends or during the summer they can come and relearn their skills that they were taught long, long ago. Absolutely. That's yeah. a great, great suggestion. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole catechesis discipleship piece, uh, we have uh, an incredible catechism that we've now approved, mm -hmm. but how do we use that? How do we make disciples, which is what Jesus called us to do? He didn't call us to go make wonderful church members. He didn't call. I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, did, he didn't call us to do liter, to, to go do wonderful worship, mm -hmm. uh, which you know we want to do all of that. But but the calling he gave uh, and the challenge and the commission he gave us was to go make disciples. So how can we take this wonderful catechism and help us uh, make disciples of Jesus Christ? Um, the other piece in that is I, I feel like the catechism uh, committee, those folks who've been working on that, would love to see it go to another level to have apps 
to have uh, online user friend, friendly online user programs and, and things that people can use. How can we move that forward? Uh, is something that I want to see us do. Um, another thing is the um, church. Some people call it church remissioning. Some people call it church revision. Uh, but the whole idea is so many churches have gotten stuck, not intentionally. They want to grow. They want to deepen. They want to bring children in. They want to know how to minister to youth, but they don't know how. Uh, the Diocese of the Carolinas, the American Angle Council, they've been doing some things to help with it. I want to see us make that more broadly available for dioceses and congregations to be able to, to use. Um, and I think it's essential. How are we going to reach the young people in our country? How are we going to reach the children? And uh, too many of our Anglican congregations, when you show up, there aren't any children. Uh, that's very true. One of the biggest issues we have here in the Northeast is it's, it's a post-Christian Northeast. Um, yes. It's all about rel relativism and enlightenment, and uh, um, it's very difficult to engage. And now we have empty churches to prove it. Um, another thing about building up the province is I, I think we've got to empower the laity to exercise their ministries, to exercise their leadership in the church, um, to bring back the healing ministry that, that was so vibrant among us Anglicans earlier. It's crucial, I think, that we have um, lay people empowered and, and in positions of leadership throughout the church. And that's something that I, I, you know, uh, in order to build up the province, we're going to have to have. Um, I think communication to the province about what is going on is, is also something that we've got to do better at. Uh, most people are bombarded nonstop with all kind of communication. So how can we communicate in a way that when people see it's from us, they want to stop what they're doing and, 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 and pay attention? Mm -hmm. uh, because there's so many good things. Um, in the whole area of development, and this is something that some people uh, do have an uh, interesting time with, uh, raising money. Uh, we, we have a person, a canon for development, mm -hmm. and that's something that we've had uh, since the beginning of the ACNA. Um, I've challenged um, Canon uh, Hawkins not to raise to the budget, but to raise above the budget. I've given him a challenge of $3 million uh, to, to uh, enable us to get out of uh, having to, to raise the budget every year. Yeah. The other thing is if we're going to do creative ministries and, and help dioceses and congregations to flourish, we've got to have funds to be able to do those sorts of things. Another thing to build up the promise is what I call good governance. Uh, we've got to have governance that's open, that's clear, that that's follows the canons, um, but that everybody understands. Um, you were at, at uh, La Trove. I, I would like to see us have more uh, excellent provincial events like that, where the whole province comes together. Um, I, I, there, I mean, there were some things that we all say could be improved, but but it was an excellent event for the ACNA. And most people that came away came away fired up, excited, uh, encouraged to be an Anglican, and ready to get on with the, the mission God's called us. And I, we've got to have more events like that. Last thing I want to say about building up the province is I want to be a teaching archbishop. Um, part of my gifts is teaching um, the scriptures, and I don't want to give that up. But I also want to free bishops from, from the, uh, all the expectations of administration and all of that to try to help our bishops utilize their gifts of being teaching bishops. I want to recover the office of teaching as part of the office of bishop. Uh, I just think that's crucial for building up the province. Our College of Bishops has some very godly men, and some of them are excellent teachers and preachers. Most of them are, I should say. Most of them uh, are excellent teachers and preachers, and I want to free, help them somehow to be freed to use their gifts to be teaching bishops in the church. So that's kind of a summary. I know I've given you a lot, and your head's probably spinning, and, and I don't know how we're going to do all of that. I really don't. Uh -huh. um, well, but, it, it's but, not up to us. Exactly. <laughs> it's up to the Lord and also up to uh, him to raise up the folks to, to, uh, to impart the vision. Well, let, let me ask you a few questions then. Um, what do you identify then or define as the role of a bishop? Well, obviously you have your liturgical functions, but I, I think the bishop is supposed to be a spiritual leader and live in godliness and a holy life. Um, but. To me, one of the key pieces is, is a teaching bishop. Um, it's fun to see those bishops that take serious their call of, of being a chief evangelist um, and are out there sharing the good news of the gospel. Um, of course, we have all of our uh, Anglican uh, protocols that we put on the, the office of the bishop. Uh, and then, of course, pastoring. 
Uh, I think um, just as a rector is, is the pastor to his his sheep in the in the church, the bishop ought to be a pastor to the rectors or the pat or the priest and the, and the de deacons in the diocese. Um, and uh, but so many times they can't do that because of they, they just like you and me have limited time, limited resources. Um, but who who would the clergy to turn to? Can they can they have a, a man of God that they can trust and someone who will pastor them? So that's important to me as well. And then lastly, a, a bishop's supposed to be a leader. Um, a shepherd is a leader. One of the issues that I find when I talk to the College of Bishops is uh, affinity diocese. What is your vision for the future of affinity diocese? I think we're always going to have some affinity diocese. Uh, I believe the uh, movement in the college and probably in provincial council at this point is, a, is away from affinity diocese and where we have overlapping Jewish jurisdictions to figure out how to work together and eliminate as many of those as we can. But uh, I just think we're, just the way we're structured and the, and the culture that we live in, uh, we're going to have affinity diocese. Mm -hmm. um, so five years from now, I hope we don't have as many. I hope we don't have as many overlapping jurisdictions. Uh, Ten years from now, I hope that'll even be less. But I think we'll have uh, um, always have some affinity diocese. You've been traveling around, making phone calls. A lot of people ask you about one question, and uh, that would be women's uh, ordination. Um, obviously, there's a plan in place right now uh, to study it. Uh, let, can you tell me what that is? Well, we have um, a serious mm -hmm. uh, task force with folks that are uh, scholarly as well as uh, uh, represented all camps in this issue that are working on that. Mm -hmm. And they have a specific process of, of study. And when they finish that study, they will present that to the College of Bishops. It's not going to be a yes or no, all right, we've definitely concluded this as is the answer, I, or I say that, they may come out with that. Um, what we agree to in our in, in the bishops uh, when we set this up is that because we are interrelated now with the GAFCON coalition and, and confessing movement, uh, we will not do something without uh, working with them in the same process. So uh, what we've agreed to do is to share that with them and get them to comment and speak to it. And then before we unilaterally act, as we've seen in um, other situations, has, has broken up the communion. Mm -hmm. And so we want to do whatever we do in concert with our GAFCON partners. So, so does that help? I, I'm, I'm no, not yeah, sure that's fine. Explaining, I, <laughs> I feel like I'm rambling, and I don't mean to be doing that. Well, this is your first uh, Anglican TV interview, so you, you can ramble a little. There's a little forgiveness because we got so, we got just a, a fire hose of information coming on here. So. <laughs> Let's talk about some international stuff. Um, if you've watched TV for the last month, uh, cable news, uh, the world is on fire. Uh, the Middle East is uh, crumbling further. Um, we're having uh, bigger, more dramatic issues with uh, I radical Islam. Um, what is your, your voice to that? Well, I have, well, first of all, I want to say that I have asked the church to pray and fast and to speak up uh, on that issue to, uh, in ways that we can and influence in, uh, in our countries. Um, and personally, I've been you know, praying and fasting about the situation. I've contacted my representatives who have, uh, some of them have acted. Um, and that's, we've seen actually results out of the United States government. Uh, since um, we started this, so I see that as an answer to prayer. There's aid uh, getting going forth, um, but we we are living in a time where uh, to to be a Christian, to be a follower of Jesus, is under attack from all sorts of places, um, and especially in the Middle East. Most people probably didn't realize there were so many Christians living in Iraq mm -hmm. and in Syria. Uh, we we, uh, we were not told that. Uh, the news media didn't focus on that. We thought they were just all Muslims over there, uh, but that is not the case. And it's tragic uh, right now um, in talking to uh, Archbishop Manir Anis, uh, he's got two priests that are trapped in Tripoli uh, who have been doing ministry there and uh, cannot get out. Um, this uh, city is under bombardment as we speak. 
uh, missiles are being uh, launched into the to the city, and they can't get out. Uh, so uh, it's it's a very difficult time, and we've got to uh, pray and fast and uh, speak up where we can. And uh, for those governments who can stop wrong and evil, we must ask them to speak out and act. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you for your time. You did very well for your first interview. Uh, I suspect we'll be doing <laughs> dozens, if not hundreds of more. Um, uh, we do ask people to, uh, to pray for Archbishop Foley in his new role as Archbishop, that he will be protected and guided, and, and that that's something you do with your church and individually. Uh, your family, pray for his family, and um, we will continue this another time, Archbishop. Good to be with you, Kevin. God bless you, and thank you for your prayers. It means a lot. And let's continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in the Middle East.